So I am at Costco right now, and not only do they have the chickens, but they just made them fresh. Like, still boxing them up, and the vultures are swooping in. So I'm going to get one where it's touching the top, because that is what I really like. So there is obtaining of the chicken part one. So, okay, I am back from Costco and it's been a couple hours and um, we're going to break down this rotisserie chicken because uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with this. One of my go-tos is like this fantastic white enchilada recipe that actually I found on YouTube. Um, and then there's one that's one that our family really loves and it is homemade pot pie. Now homemade <laughs> does not mean that I made the crust and everything from scratch. I have, but actually we like the frozen kind better. I don't know if I'm just not that good at crust yet, but, uh, and I make this pot pie with only chicken. We used to add vegetables too, but my husband really just wants it with meat only. And uh, I've done it a bunch of different ways. You don't have to do this recipe with just chicken. I've also done it with like shrimp and mushrooms and ugh, artichoke hearts and so many different fantastic things. You can really just take this and make it your own. But uh, the rotisserie chicken is a huge time saver and it tastes way better than when I've made the chicken myself. It's like so tender and delicious. It's the best way to do it. and. I mean, especially if it's a weeknight and you want to just throw together dinner, this is a great way to do it. And uh, so anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And um, what I'm going to do is break down the chicken. So we take the little lid off here and then <laughs> here we have it. The beautiful Costco rotisserie chicken in all its glory. Uh, so... They put a little like rubber band thing around the legs. You wanna make sure you get that out of here because eventually we're gonna use this entire thing. I mean, the, um, the goal here is to get the most out of this chicken and the way to do that is by using the entire bird. And what I mean by that is after I use the chicken to make, you know what, I'm probably gonna have more than, an, more chicken than just what we need for the pot pie. So I will use the rest of this probably for dinner tomorrow in like a salad or uh, sometimes we even use it for like burritos or tacos and season it up. Um, yeah, or even in a sandwich. And uh, anyway, and then after that, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna strip all the meat off and then um, I'm going to save some of the skin and we don't really eat the wings, so I'm gonna save those two. And then all of the bones and carcass and those juices down here at the bottom. And I'm going to freeze it because I need two chicken carcasses to make bone broth with. So the bone broth is gonna be a separate video, but I will show you what I do with the carcass at the end to save it for that because that's really important. So I'm just, I'm not gonna show you the entire time of me picking the chicken. I'm just gonna show you here. You can peel off the skin. Okay, so through the magic of television, I, uh, I switched over to uh, time-lapse to break down the chicken so you don't have to watch that whole experience go down. But that's how I did it. You watched me break it apart there and then a little later on I'll show you what to do with the carcass. If you want to save that, I know it's kind of a gross word, carcass, but uh, the rest of it if you want to make bone broth, which is great. And I'm going to do a whole separate video about that, but keeping the bones and skin and weird little hunks of chicken that you don't really want to eat and all the little jelly once it gets cool at the bottom, the pan drippings, uh, are key for making bone broth. So anyway, back to the pot pie. Um, I did not mention before, uh, before you start to pick all of the meat off your chicken, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And then also I, at that time, 
take out my frozen pie crusts, you can see here, uh, and just let them chill on the counter because they need to thaw out as well. So um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put this together and um, I'm going to point the camera back down so you can see what I'm doing. So again, this is a great uh, go-to for weeknights or whatever, and it's kid-friendly, and it's picky husband-friendly, and it really takes no time at all, and it's amazing. So um, right now I'm doing this recipe just for one uh, pot pie with the crust on top as well, but if you wanted to make two, this is actually designed to make two. So what you want to do is uh, here I've got some cream of chicken. You can also use cream of celery, cream of mushroom. You can make your own roux and or sauce or gravy. I've, I've done this so many different ways, but this is kind of my go-to and I just stock up on these at the store and I just use whatever I have. Cream of celery is excellent. Cream of chicken is good. Go with what you like. If you've got some amazing family recipe, throw it in there. It tastes better the more you add to it and do with it, really. Um, but this one is the most popular and the quickest at our house. So that is what I'm going with. And um, you know what? I am going to use a spoon. <clears throat> Anyhow, so what you want to do if you're making just one pot pie, you just scoop out about half of a can of this. If you're going for two pot pies, then you'll do the whole can. Easy peasy. And then you'll want to add half of a cup of milk and mix it up. So it's real simple. You want to uh, get it pretty well mixed together, but um, you know, even if it's still a little lumpy, it will totally mesh in the oven. So that looks pretty good, that consistency. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, there we have it. So then the chicken, uh, just to gauge, you can do this however you like, but I like to literally mix up the white meat and the dark meat so I can fool all of my family members that don't like the dark meat because it's all mixed together and you can't really tell. Uh, anyway, fill up the pot pie to the level of chicken that you want in there. See, I still have plenty of leftover chicken and this guy is brimming. It's gonna be like, oh, they will not eat the skin. Um, it's gonna be piled up, kind of like a apple pie or something. So that's how much I'm going to add in and I'm gonna take that chicken and just dump it right in my sauce. Oh, I lost a piece, that's so sad, but my dogs are gonna be really happy about it. Here you go. Uh, anyhow, uh, there's what we do with that. And then you'll just want to mix it all together. Ans kana aya, right? And it doesn't look very saucy, but it is plenty of sauce. Don't add extra. It'll be like soupy and weird. And then your family will be like, what are you doing to me? Uh, so here we go. Put it into the pot pie. Nice and simple. Sorry. Maybe in your field of view would be nice. And there you have it. Just like that. And again, it does not look that saucy, but I assure you it will melt and ooze into all the places that it should be. <clears throat> and again, if you want to add vegetables or other stuff, we actually added cheese one time just to see what that was like. And it was kind of a waste of cheese, to be honest. We couldn't even taste it. Uh, so with the other crust for the top, you want to take a knife and cut off the extra little edge along the side here because you don't need that. And sometimes you get, okay, so these pie shells come in two packs and there's always one that's cracked. <laughs> so what I do is I use the uncracked one to be the base and then the cracked one like so, I use for the top because the top always kind of gets messed up anyway. And what you do is you just cut off the edge and then you flip it over and ease it off. And then there it is. Oh no, it's broken. What am I gonna do? You just like 
fix it the best you can because you're going to cut vent holes in this anyway. And honestly, the ugliest ones always turn out to be the best tasting. So just go with it, you know? And I'm even going to use a couple of those pieces because I have so much piled up on the top here. A couple of the little edge pieces that I cut off. Just arrange them on there the best you can to kind of fill in the gaps. You know what I mean? And then, old school style, take a fork and press it down along the edges and seal it up the best you can. Again, this is awesome for like a weeknight dinner. Uh, it's pretty quick and all of the ingredients are ready to go. And I mean, come on, the Costco chicken costs like $4.99 and there's still leftovers for some other meal or maybe lunch or whatever. And then you get this amazing pot pie and then you still get to use the rest for the bone broth. Um, but my point in bringing up the cost is this is a really inexpensive dinner. The um, pie shells cost like $1.99. The chicken costs $4.99 and you still have a bunch left over. And the cream of chicken is what, like a dollar, a dollar fifty maybe, and uh, a little bit of milk. So there you have it. Now I like to line my cookie sheets with aluminum foil just in case a little bit bubbles over. That way um, you don't have to clean up after you're done. That's another thing that's great about this. No cleanup, straight into the garbage. Unless you really want to be thrifty and repurpose that, then go for it. Oh, and look at that. That whole piece that I just pieced together was right there stuck in the pan. Oh my gosh, that's like painful. Anyway, there we have it. Now I'm going to put this in the oven. 350 degrees for about half an hour. And then uh, check it. It looks nice and golden and the crust is done. And I will show you... Uh, when it comes out of the oven how great it looks and i wish you could smell and taste it because it's awesome so uh be back in a minute with that finished product so while the pot pie is cooking this is when i save the rest of the chicken for my bone broth and um stay tuned because that is going to be a uh an awesome recipe in and of itself. I mean, bone broth is amazing. So anyway, I take the remainder and I put it into a baggie, unless I had two, and then I will um, just make bone broth right then. But you need two chicken carcasses for the recipe that I like to use, and I don't wanna waste it. So I'm not planning on buying another rotisserie chicken for probably a week at least. So in the meantime, I'm going to freeze this so that it's ready to use and um i actually i dismantled the whole thing i don't know how much you could see during the time lapse but um and then i actually broke the main body cavity uh in half because it fits easier into the instant pot when i make my bone broth um, or you can also use a crock pot if you want or whatever but um anyway that's that and then what i do is i take the pieces, I throw them into like a gallon sized Ziploc and I freeze it. That way when I get my second chicken and I'm ready to use it, I'm not going to save all of this skin. That's going to the dogs. Um, most of it I will keep, actually I'm going to pull a little bit more out. If you have too much skin in there, then it's really fatty and you have more to scrape off the top. But you do want some because it has great flavor. Uh, Anyhow, when I get my second chicken, then I will just put this straight into the Instant Pot out of the freezer. I don't even worry about thawing it out. Right now, I'm getting all of this gelatinous <laughs> chicken juice out of the mold and into the baggie because that has a ton of flavor and makes the bone broth really good. So we want to make sure that we capture all of that. Anyhow, that's it. I'm just going to put this into the freezer and... Uh, the pot pie is still cooking, so I'll be back with that in a moment, but I just wanted to share this because it's an important part of the prep for another recipe out of this great rotisserie chicken. 
there you have it. Okay, so it's been 32 minutes. I kind of lost track of the timer, which is <laughs> sometimes is a little problem for me, but uh, I'm not making garlic bread, so we're good. Usually I always burn garlic bread, but uh, here it is. No more preamble. There it is, oozing sauce. I told you it would be enough, even though it looked semi-dry before. The outer crust is just like golden brown, and the top is still pretty blonde. If you like it more golden than this, you can always do like an egg wash over the top. Uh, but there it is, delicious, and smells amazing. And this is enough food for an entire family. I mean, you just take out slices like a regular pie, and then you can serve it with like salad or whatever, or you can just dig in and eat the whole thing if you like. Uh, there it is. I recommend letting it cool for at least five to ten minutes. If you cut into it too soon, the sauce just oozes everywhere. And once you give it a chance to mellow out, then it is um, amazing. The sauce uh, is not super runny once you let it cool, so at least five to ten minutes. And I will come back at that point where we actually take a slice out of it so you can see how it looks. The first one usually falls apart, but you know, it's pot pie. You normally just like dump it upside down and chop it all up anyway, and it's amazing. It's delicious. And uh, yeah, so I'll be back in just a minute, and you can check out what it looks like on a plate. And I wish you could smell it. It's amazing. <laughs> so uh, back again in just a second so you can see the final product about to be eaten. I hope you're enjoying this because I'm going to in just a few minutes. Okay, well, it's nice and cool now, and I took a slice out, and it looks amazing. So here is what the piece looks like cut out. Amazing, right? Oh my gosh, look at that. I hope you can see it as well as I'd like you to. Oh yeah. It held its shape. It's nice and flaky. It's amazing. Here's what this looks like <clears throat> with that piece taken out, holding together. Yeah, please let it cool five to 10 minutes or else it'll be a runny mess. So now I'm going to, whoa, now I'm going to uh, give it a taste and uh, that way you can all kind of have what I'm having, if you will. So here it is. Ooh, it's still super hot. I'm going to burn my mouth. Oh my God. It's great. The rotisserie chicken is so tender. It's so much better, unfortunately, than making your own chicken at home. And it really just goes super well with this. And like I said, give it a try. Make it your own. Add what you like. Uh, it's great with vegetables too, but um, my husband really likes just meat with meat. So that's what we're having tonight. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, more to come. I love cooking, and this is my very first recipe I've done on video. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you try it, because it's great. It's delicious. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.